Hey, what's up, everybody? Bro Trio here, and we have a new show for you, which we've done it before, but now we have a title for it. We're gonna call it the What You Playing Pow Wow, where we discuss whatever games we are currently playing. We are gonna come out with these videos pretty much whenever the hell we feel like it. There's yeah. no real set schedule. We'll try to do at least like one a month, but yeah. you know, no guarantees. It is us we're talking about, so. Nothing set in stone, but these feel like, you know, videos that would be fun for us. They might be fun for y'all. You can put it on, set it down, go wash dishes, just listen to it. I don't give a shit. Whatever you want to do, if you enjoy it, then we're doing it good. So, in our first episode, we're going to be discussing pretty much the games we got during the Christmas sales. Because I know I got a lot, and I have been playing oh, yeah. Eagle Island right now. And it's been pretty fun. So this game has been on my radar for a long time. I found it because one of my favorite hobbies to do is just go on the eShop and look at shit. <laughs> and so I went on it and I found this like indie game. And I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And then it was, I think it was like $20 or something. And I was like, I'll wait for a sale. Because I couldn't really find any reviews of it online either. That's the weird part. Yeah, I do that sometimes and just put it on my wish list. Yeah. I did, and then I got an, in or not a Nintendo, I got an email from Nintendo, and they were just like, hey, your wish list is on sale, go buy it. So I got it for like $12, I think, something like that. It's awesome so far. I th I'm guessing I'm about maybe halfway through it, because I have a bunch of little like elemental feathers and stuff, and there's a lot of grayed out stuff on uh, the title screen, so I'm guessing roughly halfway. But... So this game, you start out on an island, and there's an eagle, and she is mad. So this eagle <laughs> kidnap. Okay, let me start over. Um, you are a little boy, bird trainer, and you have two owls. And then the eagle snatches up one of your owls. So you have to go, obviously, save your owl. And you get this magic, like falconer's glove, so you get to throw your owl at shit. And that's how you attack, is like you basically... But it's an owl, not a falcon. Uh, it still works. It's the glove that does <laughs> it, apparently. But you can attack with your owl in all eight directions, which is cool. And whenever you hold attack in the air, you just kind of float there for like three seconds to aim. That's not realistic. Uh, it's a game about owls, <laughs> and there's even elemental owls and shit. I mean... It's not supposed to be realistic. But you end up getting like three elemental feathers so you can turn your owl into either lightning, fire, or ice. That's pretty sweet. It yeah, is that, awesome. What's sounds... the owl's name again? I remember it had a cute name. I think it's like Koji or something. I like it. Something like that, yeah. But um, you can cycle through all of them. If you hit Y, I believe it like freezes the game and you can do your little wheel of stuff to do like a lot of games do or you can hit the shoulder buttons to quick cycle through them like Mega Man and the lightning one anytime you throw Koji at enemies if they're like in sequence he blasts through all of them so if you have like three in a row zip right through all of them it's awesome the fire one is more generic attack based as fire should be but when you ever throw Koji at something whenever he hits it he explodes, and there's this big fireball <laughs> that comes after him. Like, does it does it hurt him? No, it doesn't hurt him. Okay. Koji doesn't have health, so if you throw him into an obstacle, it just knocks out the obstacle. He has a little bit of cooldown if he gets hurt, and you can't throw him for, like, you know, half a second, which matters if you're in the heat of it. But And then the ice one is, you know, ice. So whenever you throw it at something, it freezes an enemy, and they drop down and shatter but, cool thing is, if that enemy is above another enemy, then they, they will fall on the enemy and hurt that enemy, because they're ice. Oh. So that's a cool aspect of it. And, um, one of the main things about it is that I, I didn't know it before I bought it, because I do not like procedurally generated games, but Eagle Island has, like, procedurally generated dungeons. So you go through them, and every now and then, like, it's always different. And you get to the little save point rooms that are, like, gauntlet 
fights where you have to fight like six to ten things all at once and then the toucan comes down and sells you stuff and then you get to the boss eventually but that's how the dungeons work so it's kind of cool and uh, sound, that does sound cool one of the coolest things it has is these little rune rune stones that are basically like random upgrades so you get one it, in, it improves your health so you go from four hits to five hits and then you get one and it turns like it makes you can throw koji faster or something one makes him bounce off of walls and there's some ones that like accent the elemental feathers so like if you throw the lightning koji at someone he'll get like a lightning sphere around him while you do it it is awesome oh. one of my favorites i really hope you've got his name right because you said it a lot <laughs> i point. think it's right <laughs> if it's not then i don't know but um one of my favorites is a little compass you get and it tells you where treasure chests are and the where the boss is so you kind of know how far away from it you are <clears throat> but my absolute favorite is the elemental lockers because you have like a magic meter basically and if you get combos you can refill your magic meter but i kind of am not good at it so i don't get combos that much i play very safe so I don't get much reward because I don't risk it for the biscuit. But you can get certain rune stones that will lock the owl in fire, ice, or lightning. So you don't have to worry about your magic. And it's ridiculous because you're just overpowered. Hmm. But all the rune stones have like a set amount of uses or a time limit. And like you can start to hear it like it has a little audio cue when it's running out. And then they break and you don't have them anymore now outside of lobbing koji and things is there anything else to the combat no oh that's it cool <laughs> it, i mean it really doesn't need more than that it's pretty straightforward like once you see it you know what to do the only thing that takes a little bit of getting used to is cycling through the elements and figuring out what's weak to what but the overworld is kind of almost metroidvania ish like you have certain things that you can't access at the beginning and then you beat it and um, you get like I got this thing that helps me swim underwater and you can swim underwater to other caverns and do stuff underwater now so you can get to places you couldn't access before but that's pretty much Eagle Island so far I haven't beat it yet but I fought the Eagle once and it was in fucking tents well, I've been uh, dabbling in Scribblenauts and Pokemon uh, Shield, basically until Dragon Ball Kakarot comes out. So, I've been run basically just after they announced the DLC and stuff. You know, I'm I'm kind of psyched for it. I'm like, yeah, so two more wild areas. It's kind of scummy that 200 old Pokemon are kind of locked to this. Like they yeah, should just like release those in the base wild area, but. Every other company does it, so I can't really fault them too hard for it. They do that kind of stuff. That's true. So, whatever. I'm going to buy it because I think the Wild Area is the best addition that Pokemon has made since, like, Abilities in it Gen really 3. Is. It's so good. This has me excited for the future because since both DLCs yeah. are locked in the Wild Area, basically... Gen 9 is going to be wild nothing. Yeah, it wild seems like that's going to be the whole thing, yeah. yeah. It's either going to be everything or not going to be there at all. Yeah, that's a strong possibility because they'll be, you know, you, you guys like Mega Evolutions? They're got, they're out. Z moves, they're out. Every gimmick they have except Pokemon to me has got to go. <laughs> but other than that, I've been playing Scribble Knots uh, Unmask. I bought the pack when everything was on sale. I I played all of them except for Unmasked and Showdown, I believe. Haven't gotten Showdown yet, but Unmasked is cool because. Maxwell, you know, with his godlike item that he has that makes him a god. Oh, yeah, that. Him and his sister were arguing because she's got the globe that can teleport anywhere. He's got the notebook that can make anything. They were arguing about who was better out of Superman and Batman. He's like, you know what? We're just going to go meet him. And he wrote Gotham in his notebook and slammed it into the globe, and they're in the DC universe now. <laughs> So, not only can he make... Yeah, that notebook is, like, one of the most powerful things in fiction. Not it only is. can he make any unlicensed thing ever, he can make everything from Zeus to a bumblebee. 
he can teleport to different dimensions with this thing. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous, and Scribblenauts has... It's kind of sucks without touchpad a little bit, but it's it's always good fun because like it's like the best example I can think of is from the first one. The old man was like, "I can't see too well." And instead of glasses, I gave him a sniper rifle. <laughs> and he was like, "Thanks." <laughs> it was just like wacky little solutions. It's a cute little puzzle game. I just like scribble knots, and it's it's a chill time waiting for Kakarot. But the main one I wanted to talk about that I've beaten. Even though I started way later than him, was Jedi Fallen Order. Once I got to a certain point, I just couldn't put it down. Once I fought the Ninth Sister, and like it was a good game until that point, but after that, everything just ramped up to a great game. I I planned on getting the platinum for it, but I just uh, the map. I don't the like map it. Sucks, the map sucks, and no is, fast travel no, sucks more. <laughs> no fast travel is bad, and I don't like the map. And a couple of the combat ones, I feel like the slow one. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but you kill 25 enemies while they're slow. Well, they're empowered slow. And I'm sitting there holding out one like it, like empowered slow says to do, and I'm slashing them, and I know I've done that to over 25 enemies. Because there was a spot with a bunch of stormtroopers and uh, next to an Ogdo. And, uh, That's the frog thing? The frog thing, okay. yeah. So I, 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 there's like ten stormtroopers, and I'd slow them, slaughter all ten, then I'd kill the Ogdo, and I, most of the time I got him with a slow strike. And then I would go meditate and bring them all back, and I did it like four times and no trophy, <laughs> so I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I kind of just give up, and then I beat it, and... I have this habit with games where when I beat them, I kind of have no motivation to go back unless there's like a really cool end game thing to do. So, I'm done with Fallen Order for now, but I freaking loved it. The, the lightsaber combat is the best in any Star Wars game, I think. Because, you know, Force Unleashed was just, it was just God of War, Devil May Cry action game. It didn't make you feel like a, well, it made you feel like a pretty good Sith, actually. But I want it because, you know, it's super aggressive. Yeah. That's why the Sith fight. But I wanted to feel like a Jedi, and this one pulled that off. Because you have to be defensive, or you're going to get your shit rocked. And almost every Jedi fighting style is very defensive, from what I can gather. It added some some cool stuff to the lore and the overall story. Like, um, like on Ilum and stuff like that, where you go forge your own lightsaber. Oh, spoilers. Well, there's going to be a spoiler warning. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to try to keep away from spoilers because I think the story was great. I like the the your crew. I like all those guys quite a bit. And Cal Kestis, you know, he was a little vanilla at first. Not bad, but once you reach a certain point that I will not spoil for you because it is intense, you really see why he is, like was the way he was and then he improves and it just it's a really cool path for Cal t from going to scared Padawan that was hiding out for like seven years to basically a full on Jedi Knight like you know, the order is basically dead at this point in the story but he's like he's on par with most Jedi Knights I would say by the end of this he's awesome I I can't wait for them to continue this story, which I assume they will, whether it's DLC or a sequel, and we got a Star Wars game that EA didn't screw up for once. That's all I could ask for. <laughs> yeah. Bring back 1313 and do that one now, because <laughs> I can't be satiated when, when you give me a good Star Wars game and then it's over and I want more, but I don't want to go platinum it until you give me fast travel, which you probably never will. So what have you been playing, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, what's your story oh, here? <laughs> well, technically, I haven't played anything in the last month because I had to send my Switch in because it got dust under the screen and I also had both sets of Joy-Con start to doing the drift. Oh. So I sent those in at the same time. <laughs> and it was right after the Christmas sale. So I had all these games that I had just bought that I really wanted to play, like... Uh, what is it? Jotun or Jotun? The Jotun. 
It's yeah, like a Metroidvania it? where you're like a, a Viking trying to get into Valhalla or something. You just die. It looked super cool. You, you already died. You're in like hell. Well, then you're not going. You're not. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it looked weird. <laughs> but. And then I also bought from the same publisher, Sundered, which is like a bullet hell Metroidvania. That's a cool name. And it just, it looked ridiculous. But, like I said, right after I bought them, my Switch and stuff had to go get fixed. So, I've just been kind of mostly playing mobile games. Like, I've I've fully beat Dr. Mario World, except for now they added a new level in. And, uh... Didn't you get all the stars, too? Not all the stars, but I'd beaten every level. No. And then finally, this Thursday, it came back in. So, first thing I did was download the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon demo. Because I saw that in the Nintendo Direct, and I was like, hell yeah, I've always wanted to play that game. Yeah. And I'm about 20 minutes in. So, (laughs) it's, uh... How does... does... It's it's pretty fun. It's kind of cute. Like, it's not, like, gonna be a favorite Pokemon game ever type thing. It might be. It might, yeah, but... It goes... What if it goes, like, real dark and heavy on you and you don't know? Like It might. Like, like Squirtle betrays everybody, but then regrets it and, like, kills himself or something. You start off that, like... You probably do a heard about that. You do, like, a personality quiz, and then it's like, oh, well, you're probably gonna be this Pokemon. You're not a Pikachu? No. Oh, that makes this way better. I was just... Assume it was like Pikachu. I thought it was going to be an Animal Crossing thing, and I was going to have to reset because my result was Machop, and I like Machop, but I wanted to be Squirtle because that was one of the options. But you can just choose. How many so, options are there? Oh, it's like fifteen. Wow, this is sounding a little yeah. fun. Too bad it comes you out pick, the day after Final Fantasy like VII you, remake. You pick which one you want to be, and who's going to be your buddy. Which I picked Cubone. Aww. Because Cubone needs a buddy. That's the cutest and... <laughs> little team. You... Don't they have scarves? Yeah. Yes. Because Cubone has been looking okay. for a partner to make his rescue squad. So he already had the bandanas ready to go. He was just looking for somebody. <laughs> now the only weird thing is you find out apparently right at the get go we already put a spoiler warning, right? Yes. You're apparently a human trapped in a Pokemon's body? Yeah, I don't like that. I'm not sure what going on there but there's also a remake for a game that came out in 2006 so spoilers yeah, are kind out of the window that's very true I just wish that they but I think it's going to be a, a pretty fun little uh, basic RPG type game yeah. I really like the art style they went with for the redesign it looks like the uh, closest thing I can relate it to is like the 100 acre wood levels from Kingdom Hearts it looks like Winnie the Pooh storybook graphics yeah kind of yeah. I really like it. It's got a cool little whimsical vibe to it. So that was our first What You Playing Pow Wow. Hopefully y'all liked listening to us discuss these games. I know we really like talking about it because I've been wanting to do a video similar to this since I played Days Gone because I'm apparently the only one, at least in my friends group, that played it or had any interest in it. So I wanted to make one to talk about it, but instead I just bottled it up inside and hated myself so now we have an outlet to talk about it I really just it, these are fun videos to make we do this without the cameras on so we figured we'll turn the cameras on maybe someone else will get a kick out of it so now y'all get to participate in this in the comments and let us know what you've been playing especially if you have suggestions because like you may have seen with the tourist we're definitely open to suggestions and we'll take it to heart and definitely put it on our wish list for games So let us know what you've been playing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more of these because we're pretty much going to be coming out with them anytime we feel the need to talk about a game. It may not all, like all three of us may not have something to talk about, but if one of us has beaten a game and we just have to talk about it, we're going to talk about it. Similar to what we did with Death Stranding. So y'all stay tuned for that. They'll come out whenever the hell we feel like it. So stay tuned. Tuned to Brotrio to keep an eye on that.